at, um, at the end, we have virtue theories left to consider as a type of moral theories. Now, virtue theories uh, stipulate that a good choice is a choice that is done by a good person. So it is right if a right person does it. So it seems a little bit, uh, at least to me, who is not from moral philosophy, this seems a little bit up there, right? But uh, at, at first glance, definitely this seems like a dead end because for machine ethics, because I mean, what are we going to say? What this action, this robot is behaving is, is, is moral because it's a moral robot. What it does is moral because we made it to be moral. We said it's a moral robot, go for it to be moral, right? No, but uh, that is a very naive view. So in the core of virtue ethics is that, how do you choose uh, what to do or what option to take in a particular situation is that you consider some virtuous ideal person, some person that you consider ideally virtuous or agent or entity or supreme being, if you like. Uh, and then you ask yourself, what would this virtuous ideal person do? And then try to emulate the, the behavior and the choices of this uh, virtuous ideal entity or person. So building a machine to emulate the reasoning of a specific ideal human would actually mean to apply virtue ethics. So this is uh, you know, when it comes to people, applying this theory seems a little bit hard, but when it comes to machines, actually applying virtue theories might be a way we want to go. Because uh, in a sense, learning from good examples of moral choices and bad examples of moral choices that are being established as good and bad by some person or by a collection of persons and given as input to a machine learning algorithm, for example, can actually be seen as implementing a virtue ethics theory. So this is something that has not been explored quite as much as perhaps it should be in machine ethics. And I hope that someone watching this will be inspired and take up, take, take, take up for it. And there are a few papers on using virtue theories, but I did not really consider any one of them to be like, I couldn't choose. So, you are uh, you're on, on your own to search what the existing literature on virtue theories and machine ethics is and make a choice for yourself. We, however, will be moving on to theories of value. So moral theories that are concerned with the goodness of entities, with the goodness of agents um, that are called theories of value. So the input that you have to make your choice are not what you should do, but what values you want to promote. So you, you theories of values stipulate the choices should be made based on which values they promote. Now, in contrast to theories of obligation, uh, th theories of value are actually recognizing that um, perhaps there exists no not one specific moral course of action that sometimes uh, whether something is moral or not is context dependent. Um, so we try to capture that in theories of value. Now, if you, at this point, I have to say that if you consider that um, automating moral reasoning exactly the same as automating norms, right? At this point, if you, you we, we, can, we can clearly say that, no, there is more to automating moral reasoning than automating norms. And spe specifically, that more thing is actually automating a moral reasoning using theories of value. So here I will introduce prima facie duties by Ross, and I couldn't resist again. And I will introduce Asimov's three laws, which are not officially a moral theory, but actually are a theory of value, specifically built, again, not in serious moral philosophical rigor, but they're out there and people ask about them. Uh, and they're specifically built for, for machines. All right, so uh, theories of value actually recognize that uh, you should try to advance a particular value or make sure that a particular anti-value is, uh, is not advanced by your actions. And they implicitly recognize that in some situations, there is no, no way to do, there is no way to choose what to do when you're advancing values without recognizing that certain values are more important than other values. So this is what is in a way characteristic of theories of values in contrast to theories of obligations. Now, prima facie duties, 
So according to Ross, uh, there are several prima facie duties that we can use to determine what concretely we should do, what choice we should make. And um, according to him, prima facie duty is a duty that is binding, that is obligatory to follow, when everything else is being equal. So as long as it is not overridden or trumped by another duty or duties, you should follow the duty. So he recognizes there is a bunch of duties, and then each of these duties is obligatory to you if it is not specifically said by another duty that you should not follow it. So by contrast with prima facie duties, there are actual or concrete duties uh, that are the duties we should perform in particular situation or choice. So um, concrete duty, for example, is that when you are driving in continental Europe, you should drive on the right hand side of the, of the ro road. And so this is the only situation, this is the only choice that you should make in the situation that is driving in continental Europe. A prima facie duty is something that, well, when you're driving, you really should not, you should try not to uh, run over animals with your car deliberately or accidentally, right? So prima facie duties relate to actual duties as reasons relate to conclusions of reasoning. We can say that. So uh, reasons are to conclusions of reasoning. Uh, what prima facie duties are to actual duties. So these are the prima facie duties that Ross suggested. So of prima facie duties, I suggest without claiming completeness or finality for it, the following division. Uh, by the way, that link that you see just under the title of the slide, that is the link to the original paper of Ross, where you can see what he directly had to say about this. So the duties he proposes are fidelity, that one should keep promises and contracts, as one makes them, a reparation that one should compensate for wrongdoing whenever wrong has been done, gratitude to be grateful for benefactors done to oneself and if possible to show it by benefactors in return, non-injury or non-maleficence not to harm others physically or psychologically, harm prevention to stop harm to come to others. Now, and uh, beneficence, the duty to do good to others. Now you will see that this Non-maleficence, harm prevention, and beneficence are actually considered the three separate duties, and there is a good reason for that, and um, we should go into Ross's works in order to, to, to figure it out. But it basically what I like about this is that specifically distinguishes that you cannot achieve good just by avoiding doing bad. And uh, seven is self-improvement, so you should act in a way to actually become a better person or to, to do better. And justice, you should act in a way that one distributes benefits and burdens fairly. So you should not, you know, by doing your actions, uh, increase the misfortune of some over the fortune of, of others. Now, um, these are just the eight that uh, Ross proposed, but of course people realize that perhaps there's something missing here. So there are certain duties that are added as prima facie duties which is freedom, this is, um, autonomy, that a person should respect the autonomy of others, there is care, there is non-parasitism, so you can, the, the important contribution here is the recognition that prima facie duties occur rather than specifically what it is that they are. Now prima facie duties are actually a rather popular approach in machine ethics, if we can call, you know, call papers popular, um, and uh, what is important about them is that although Ross recognizes that by definition these are duties that can override each other, he did not go so far as to propose what is the more important duty, like what is the ordering between these eight duties, which is the most important one, which is the least important one. Of course, if you can satisfy all of them, then you should, but if you can only satisfy one of two, which one, right? So this is the biggest problem with practical implementations of prima facie duties is that you have to make this choice when you are using uh, duties in order to build a system that makes moral choices between their, their, their options. Now at this point, as I said, I would also like to mention quickly the Asimov um, laws of robotics, which are basically three uh, there are three values that a, robo uh, a robot should promote, and unlike Ross, Asimov actually ranked his. So I don't think this requires a very special um, and in-depth analysis, but I take this as 
XKCD a comic in order to introduce Asimov Laws. The link to the comic is in the bottom over there. And it's the first one, the first set that Asimov proposed, which is the first duty is to do no harm, um, which overrides all other duties. Then the second duty is to obey orders. And the third duty is to protect yourself. So the most important one is to don't do harm. Uh, if that is taken care of, then you should obey orders. If that is taken care of, then you should protect yourself. Now, and uh, this comic actually analyzes what happens if the order of these duties are, are perturbed. Now, Asimov spent a lot of his career actually arguing himself why this is not, um, this is not a good way to uh, necessarily accomplish moral reasoning by machine. And if you want a little bit more serious and in one place analysis, then there is a paper by Susan Lee Anderson. And I see I didn't include it in the slides, but I will provide a link to it in, in the tutorial materials. <clears throat>